Welcome to this week's episode of Chainlink News. We have a lot to talk about, including Sergey hopping on CNBC, which will show you that video. Let's dig in. Okay, first we want to just start that, you know, Bitcoin ETFs are approved and the industry reacts. And we have a comment from Sergey. He said, the Bitcoin ETF approval has made it clear that traditional financial institutions have a significant role to play in determining how the crypto markets evolve. This was obviously evident when PayPal launched the ability to buy and sell and how some banks started to offer crypto custody. He also said the approval of the Bitcoin ETF will lead to an influx of traditional large tier, top tier financial firms like BlackRock and Fidelity, which will actively participate in the market. He also goes on to later comment that some of these players will obviously even use things like Chainlink as they want to expand from just ETF products. And also we had David Nunes from the Six Digital Exchange, which is a Switzerland-based exchange. I believe they do stocks and digital assets, but a big part of them is being a regulated stock market exchange type platform. And they released an interview with him on how Chainlink and on-chain finance is revolutionizing finance. So go ahead and check that out. That's going to be on the Chainlinks channel. And then next, we had Sergey on CNBC to talk about the potential impact of a Bitcoin ETF. Let's go ahead and check that video out now. I think based on the size of the folks looking to make these ETFs and their user base, um, I think it could be quite significant for our industry as a whole. Um, I think it'll show very clearly that TradFi is a very big player in the blockchain space and in the DeFi space. My view has always been that TradFi and the traditional capital markets are actually the biggest net buyer, the biggest net customer of things like Bitcoin. That will begin to take shape more and more through things like the Bitcoin ETF. I think, though, it'll go very far beyond that because uh, fundamentally, this technology is about creating better transactions more transparent transactions, less risky transactions, more high quality relationships between counterparties, which is fundamentally what the entire banking, capital markets and asset management sectors are really about. And so I think the Bitcoin ETF is an efficient initial step where the bigger players in the capital markets allow folks to access cryptocurrencies. But I think they will then go on to make more and more advanced financial products of their own and eventually even define their own uh, decentralized finance protocols that interact with the decentralized finance protocols on public chains. Yes. And this is where our infrastructure comes in to create that connectivity and interaction, both among Web3 protocols, among capital markets protocols, and yes. very importantly, between Web3 and capital markets. Okay, and then we have a few announcements on teams, companies, projects, integrating Chainlink. Every week we see more and more news. First, redacted is integrating Chainlink's CCIP as its exclusive cross-chain solution for transfers of Pyrex ETH. So Pyrex ETH is a liquid staking token, a staked version of Ethereum, and Redacted wants to be able to ensure that is cross-chain, and they're going to be using CCIP. Next, we have Singularity DAO has established a partnership with Chainlink Labs to support the Chainlink builders. And the Chainlink build program is something we covered a few weeks ago. There's a lot of different teams and companies joining the Chainlink build program, and they obviously become members. Singularity DAO is going to be helping provide services to them. And in return, what we always see when a team like this joins Chainlink's build program, Chainlink gets some of their token, some of their equity. So you can almost think it's like Chainlink is invested in Singularity DAO, but they didn't actually pay for them. They, they got the tokens for free. And this can continue to grow the value of Chainlink over time as they have a sort of portfolio of companies. Next, we have Legity Yield. Legity Yield is joining the Chainlink build program again. They are trying to build a yield product and they obviously are going to need institutional infrastructure right? Um, the Oracle services, technical support, um, et cetera, et cetera. So 
We see more and more of these companies joining the Chainlink build program. And again, this just adds more value to the Chainlink ecosystem. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. Please subscribe to the channel and we will see you next week.